Hello everyone, my name is Keisha Lazenby. I'm the SVP of Security Governance and Compliance. I'm here today with Jamil Farshi to discuss the fourth security annual report. Welcome Jamil, how are you today? I'm doing great, thanks for having me. Awesome, so with the release of this fourth security annual report, tell us a little bit about the significance of it. It's very significant. It's another year of raising the bar and I could not be more proud about it. We're still one of the few organizations globally that, that do this, but I think it's a testament to how transparent we've been. And um, it really deep, deep dives into all of the activities that we've been working on throughout the year. And so I think it's a good kudos to our team for all the things that we've accomplished. But at the same time, like I'm really hoping that other organizations can read through this, glean some insights, and hopefully learn from some of the stuff that we're doing so that they can put their programs in the best positions possible. So a little bit for us, but hopefully it's a, it's a good benefit to the broader community. All right, so I know that you tend to focus heavily on reducing friction within the business and enabling um, business delivery um, to, to drive customer value. And so when you talk about the attacker's playbook, um, tell us how cybersecurity has adopted a similar mindset. Well, I mean, if you look at them this year, the bad actors, um, you know, they've, they've used super high tech deep fakes to compromise organizations and they've used super low tech threats you know, things like social engineering for the help desk. Um, and they've all been successful. I think the, the one key theme though, across all of the attacks with whatever they've been doing is that, you know, they're, they're relentless. They continue to be as adaptable as one can be and they're super fast. And so I, I don't know why, um, why we should operate any differently. Like if we want to, if we want to truly protect our organizations, we can't be looking at them as these monoliths. I think we need to be nimble. I think we need to be able to respond as quickly as possible and take some of that DNA that we've developed within our cyber teams with the you know mean time to respond sort of mentality and apply that to the broader programs. And so, you know, we've done that this year uh, multiple times, whether it's eliminating all of our uh, KBA or our secrets for our help desk, you know, in a, in a two month span, whether it's getting the heads up and, and briefing all of our teams and all of our employees on the, the deep fake threats throughout the year, or it's the countless times, as you know, you know, fighting off, you know, the, the, the latest attackers with the various threats that they, that they come up with. But I think most importantly, the, the vulnerabilities that just, you know, did just happen as a matter of course, and to be able to adapt to those apply compensating controls even when there aren't patches available and, and do it you know, adaptably and do it, do it with, with uh, speed and rigor, um, I think that's the key to success nowadays. And so I'm, I'm happy that we've incorporated that into the way we operate. And um, I think it's gonna position us for success long-term. Jamil, that was a great segue into the relentlessness of the attackers and your um, program's use of innovative technology. So talk a little bit about how you guys are intending to eliminate secrets within the organization. Well, look, let's back up. Um, when we talk about secrets, we're talking about the static credentials that we all have throughout our organization. So your, your passwords, for example, um, knowledge-based authentication. And um, look, when we look at our attack surface more broadly, I think the stat is 81% of all breaches are due to, um, due to credentials. That's it, that's the basis for it. I would argue that the other 19% in some way, shape or form involve credentials because you've got to do privilege escalation to typically move laterally and stuff like that. So credentials are always going to be involved. And so our focus this year has been to try to get rid of them as much as possible because if we do, that attack surface is just immediately gone. Um, not to mention, it certainly makes it so much easier for users as well. Uh, Google had a stat I, I saw the other day that said, only 13% of users are successful when they're using their password. <laughs> and I, I mean, I could attest to that because I myself, you know, mistype things all the time. Um, but like, so it, it creates a tremendous amount of pain for the users and it's a massive attack uh, vector for the bad guys. Um, let's just get rid of them. And so that's what we've been trying to do. And, and you know, this past year, as you know, we, we were able to eliminate 94% uh, of all of our knowledge-based authentication. So all those secrets, anytime you call in, there's no you know, secret keyword or giving your birthday or anything like that. That's all, that's all gone. And then as we move into to 24, um, our plan is to eliminate all of them from the user space. And so I'm, I'm 
very adamant that this is a, a critical area for us to focus and invest in, but because I see the value and the benefit for both us from a security standpoint in our jobs, but also the general workforce and just making it easier to do work every day and to be as productive as possible. So I can tell you for one, I'll be uh, the first one to sign up for that program because I'm excited about getting rid of my password. <laughs> so in terms of that innovation, just being very strategic um, and forward looking, how are you cascading that approach across the broader ecosystem? Man, we, so look, we've, you know, this is this has been an area of focus from, from day one. Um, coming off of the 2017 breach, we learned a lot. I learned a lot. Um, and, and as an organization, I think we've all sort of coalesced and, and learned together as we've built and matured and, and done what we've done. Um, but through that journey, I think, and it started small. It started with, hey, we're going to do a bunch of um, sort of town halls with our customers and other folks like that just to teach them about some of the stuff that we learned and some of the challenges that we had as we went through this thing. Um, and it's continued to evolve. I mean, whether it's the cloud control that we released to allow all of our customers to be able to view the real-time security posture of their products and services that they leverage from us. Um, this year, we released our uh, control framework. So, you know, this control framework that we spent, you, you yourself spent a ton of time on uh, developing over the years, um, released it out and did it in a dynamic way so that it's configurable and other people could take advantage of it. You know, when I look at our budget and the amount of investment and attention security has received at Equifax, it's monumental. Compare that to you know the small to medium-sized organization out there. They just don't have that level of, of investment. Um, and so we can help them. And that's sort of the, the genesis, uh, genesis there. So in addition to that, you know, we have our we, we published our top risk report in, in conjunction with the BPC. That was fantastic. It highlighted a lot of the key risks that organizations uh, face today. Um, and faced obviously throughout throughout the remainder of that year. So I, I think our focus is continuing to um, to learn and grow ourselves, but at the same time share that out with the broader community. We want to emphasize partnership because the, the way I view it, you know, we can be we could be super strong and hyper advanced and you know best in class, but we have a broader ecosystem that we're responsible for here. And, and we can only be as secure as the other players within the space. And so I, I really want to try to uplift uh, the broader community to the best degree that we can. And that's, I think, what we did. Great. So year over year, um, you have made great strides and continue to improve your security maturity score. And I'll perform all the um, industry benchmarks. So tell us a little bit about what it took to get there and how are you continuing to move the organization forward? I think as a member of the security team, you'd probably be better <laughs> positioned to answer that question. <laughs> I, look, we, we've, all, we've all worked really hard, I think. Um, we've instilled the culture that we need, top to bottom, from the board, all the way down throughout the organization. Um, we've hired top talent. We've built in a really strong set of pipelines to be able to continue to, to uh, to build that talent and, and develop it within the organization. We've you know, invested $1.5 billion to be able to uplift our technology stack and be able to have the latest and greatest capabilities in place. I mean, it, it, was, it was never one thing. Um, and I, I, any of the big challenges that I've ever faced in my life, there's never just one single you know, answer for it. And I think we took that same approach here. It was a multitude of different facets. So I, I think that um, the improvements that we've seen uh, they've been really hard. It's taken a long time, um, but we we're in a we're in a really great place. I think the key now is to make sure that we continue to stay on the ball and we continue to to focus on being you know one day better, because it just takes you know with those dynamic, um, resilient, adaptable adversaries out there. If we rest on our laurels at this point, then it's going to be a, it's going to be a tough time for us, and it'll it'll uh, undermine all of the in investments and attention that we've put in this space. So, for me, it's about continuing to move forward, continuing to stay ahead of the attackers, making sure we're continuing to make the investments that we need, uh, but ultimately um, keeping that culture uh, that we have built and and uh, I think has really led us to success. Well, Jamil, thanks so much for taking the time to talk to us today. It's been a fantastic time partnering with you uh, in this journey and just so thankful to have the opportunity to serve and support Equifax um, along this journey. So thank you. Thank you. I appreciate the time and all the work that you do. All right.